Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an airline captain and instructor. Last week we saw in the headlines that uh, the European Aviation Regulator, EASA, is looking into the possibility to start single pilot operations. In an ICA working paper, EASA requested on behalf of member states that the necessary enablers be created for a safe and globally harmonized introduction of commercial air transport operations of large aircraft with optimized crew single pilot operations while ensuring an equivalent or higher level of safety compared to that achieving current operations. Is that possible? When you are looking at the website of EASA, the European Aviation Safety Agency, you will find a site called Extended Minimum Crew Operations, Single Pilot Operations, Safety Risk Assessment Framework. The objectives assess the issues of the feasibility of the implementation of EMCOs, Minimum Crew Operations, in the EU regulatory framework by 2025, so between two and three years from now, by developing a reference risk assessment framework and investigating a series of key safety hazards and mitigations listed in this document, and assess the issues and the feasibility of the implementation of single pilot operations in the EU regulatory framework by 2030 through a preliminary analysis of the related main safety hazards. While you can um, make a framework for the regulations, I doubt the technical solutions are there yet. In fact, I think it never will happen because two qualified pilots in a cockpit will always be superior to what air automation and artificial intelligence you throw into an airplane. Because there are situations where you cannot predict any scenario that will happen. For example, we had Qantas Flight 32, an Airbus 380. Shortly after takeoff, one of the engines exploded and caused a lot of failures. They lost a lot of systems. They got a long list of uh, checklists, about 100. Most of the systems were affected. They come to a point where they have to assess not what they lost, but what they have left. On that flight, there were five qualified pilots in the cockpit. The pilot flying the captain, he had his hands full just to fly the aircraft and the four others were a big support from him. We can also look at US Airways Flight 1549, when Captain Sullenberger and First Officer Skiles experienced a double flameout after being hit by birds. And Captain Sullenberger stated very clearly that without a qualified First Officer on his side, the outcome could have been very different. And we have United Airlines 1175 halfway to Hawaii. They experienced an uncontained engine failure. The entire covering of the engine was damaged and this created so much drag that they were not able to maintain altitude. They had to be forced to descend and they can only fly within a very narrow speed range. And the captain had his hands full just to fly the aircraft while his first officer and a third pilot on the observer seat assisted him and gave him valuable information, did procedures. The pilot on the observer seat went back to check what's going on with the engine and reported back. And without this help, the outcome could also been very different. So on these three occasions, almost 1,000 people's lives were saved. 
So what the European regulator is looking at is initially to reduce the number of uh, relief crew during long-range cruise. Instead, one of the two pilots will go back and rest, meaning there will be one pilot alone in the cockpit during cruise. There are many concerns about this. For example, what happens if they have an uncontained engine failure, like United Airlines 1175. The pilot flying had his hands full, just to maintain control of the aircraft. How can he then deal with the emergency, with the checklists, analyzing the failure? That would be absolutely impossible. And such events can be very catastrophic. So, it will, take t it will take time for the second pilot to return back to the cockpit, right? And another thing is the mental health issue, because like we saw with German wings, once the first officer was alone in the cockpit, he dived the aircraft into the ground on purpose. And will that mean we will need a much strict assessment of the mental health of the pilots, how will that work? I feel that this may eliminate some pilots who are not at risk, but if they are in doubt, they have to take them away from flying duties. So that raises a lot of questions too. And what if the pilot who is alone in the cockpit has to go to the laboratory? because you all have physiological needs, right? Then the cockpit is empty. There will be no pilots there for a short while. And what if ATC has an urgent, uh, urgent uh, call to you? There are so many concerns about that. And if Alpa, there we are. If Alpa is the International Federation of Airline Pilots Associations. And they declared on uh, the annual conference in Berlin in 2019 that our enviable safety record and culture is based upon two properly rested, fully qualified and well-trained pilots. It is imperative that any future evolution of this benchmark improves upon it and does not degrade the safety and security level in any area. It's even difficult to make self-driving cars. So what about airplanes? A car can stop at the shoulder of the road and then you can assess the situation. You cannot do that when you're flying. And the technology is not ready for this. Absolutely not. And they will say, oh, if you're a single pilot, there will be systems on board and monitor whether you become incapacitated or not that will alert the other crew member. But in the future, they want only one pilot on board. What then? Oh, they say, we can have a ground controlled. There will be a qualified pilot on the ground and via a secure data leak, he can take control of the aircraft. Um, yeah, you may encrypt data links, but that creates a delay in the signal. And anything can be hacked. What if a terrorist organization can take control of your aircraft? This raises many, many questions and concerns. We don't have a fully automated airliner yet. Yes, there are on light aircraft a system, you have a red panic button and the aircraft will land by itself. But this will stop all of the traffic in the area, just to give priority to one aircraft to land. A full autonomous aviation world will not happen for many, many decades. I'm very sure about that. It's okay, they will start to look into a framework for a regulatory standard, but we don't have this technology yet. It has to be absolutely foolproof, and I cannot see it. One pilot, you have to reduce the workload, especially 
on the ground, take off, departure, approach, landing. Sometimes the pilot will say the hardest part of a flight is after landing, just to taxi to the gate. And what if this pilot is flying along becomes incapacitated while the aircraft is on a short final just before to land. How will the system react? Can anybody take over control in the last second and save the day? I uh, doubt it. There are so many questions that must be answered. And while it is tempting for airline companies to save money by having less pilots, I have one more thing. If you operate with only one pilot in the cockpit, how can this pilot become experienced enough to do this? With two pilots, you have the option of mentoring the first officer and prepare this first officer to become a future captain. But if you only one pilot, how can you teach new pilots, mentor them? Because this takes years. I don't see any future for single pilot operations, not for the next decades. But what about you? What do you think? I'm sure many of you have many different opinions and I want to see you put them down on the comment section below. And let's have a debate about this. Because shall the money talk or shall we use common sense and improve the training of the pilots where it's needed, not degrade the safety standard we already have. Okay, that's all for this time. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.